The 1972 movie Crimes of the Black Cat, directed by Sergio Pastori, isn't one of the more fan-fated Italian thrillers of its era, largely seen as being a second or third division giallo. Its completely outrageous shower murder triggers many viewers into unfavourable comparisons with Psycho, and fans of earlier Italian horror cinema may well consider themselves as being analytical and incisive by recognising Mario Barber's Blood and Black Lace and Dario Argento's Cat o' Nine Tales as antecedents, since Pastori features a fashion house and a sightless central figure during the course of his production. So, just another rip-off then? Not necessarily. 2019's big Oscar-winning hit Joker wore its influences on its sleeve, and viewers who had been around in 1980 or thereabouts to experience the likes of Cruising, Maniac, Don't Go in the House and The Driller Killer pointed out how successful Todd Phillips had been in staging his drama in a setting recapturing the grubby nature of the beat-up, run-down New York City depicted in all of those. They'd all stolen it from Taxi Driver in the first place, of course, so Joker went one step further by taking another Martin Scorsese vision of the Big Apple as hell, the King of Comedy, shoving its title character into that plot, stealing the star of its inspiration, Robert De Niro, and turning the whole thing into a smash. A year later, Spike Lee's The Five Bloods was one of the attention grabbers among the latest Netflix roster, and pulled a similar trick effectively reprising the treasure of the Sierra Madre and only disguising that it had done so by additionally throwing huge dollops of Apocalypse Now in on top. Many movie fans have a knee-jerk reaction whenever remakes are mentioned, professing to despise them and wondering why Hollywood and Points East can't create anything original. Is the film business catching on to this hatred and managing to sneak retreads past unsuspecting audiences by utilising old plots without letting on? If that's the case, then there is precedent, and Crimes of the Black Cat is one such example. Despite the confident proclamations of every shallow expert out there, Pastore's movie isn't a steal from the previous year's Cat of Nine Tales, and Anthony Stephens' blind protagonist isn't simply a pale reworking of Carl Malden's crossword compiler from the Argento picture, because a huge percentage of the main plotline and many incidental details were lifted from a much earlier source. Henry Hathaway's 1956 London set crime thriller for 20th Century Fox, 23 Paces to Baker Street, 23 Paces to Baker Street is a tense but elaborate piece starring Van Johnson as a visually impaired playwright who overhears a clandestine and potentially incriminating conversation in a dingy boozer near his home and who develops an unhealthy obsession with this experience. In scenes that may well have influenced the later likes of Blow Up and The Conversation and in a world of fairly primitive technology, Johnson recreates the details from memory and reenacts the exchange word for word, capturing his own version on reel to reel tape and then endlessly replaying it back to himself in order to analyse, interpret, and formulate theories. Is there to be a kidnap? Or possibly something worse? The police don't want to know. His friends worry about his spurious claims and the way in which this minor incident has come to dominate his every waking moment. Crimes of the Black Cat is known as Sete Chiali di Sete Giala on its home territory, a title translating as Seven Shawls of Yellow Silk and the script by Pastori with Alessandro Continenza and Giovanni Simonelli throws in plenty of intrigue and a string of ghastly murders, all fairly typical of Italian popular cinema in the early 70s. 
The killer's modus operandi is outlandish even by Jalo standards. For each murder to be committed, they require one black cat, one wicker basket, one yellow silk shawl as per the title, one dose of heroin, one application of curare, and one dash of liquid pet repellent. And to think Leatherface may do with a simple chainsaw. This series of complicated deadly crimes needs a firm base from which to launch itself. And as already hinted, the writers opt for nicking the outline of 23 paces to Baker Street outright. For viewers who know the Hathaway film, you'll find Pastore's overhaul to be a clever and impressive take on the material. Roughly following its predecessor, but incorporating specific scenes and even pinpoint details amid the grim and bloody slasher material of its own invention, which is all beautifully intertwined. 23 Paces pub scene, where Van Johnson overhears that significant ominous conversation, is present and correct in Pastore's film. Though in the original, the loud pinging and ringing of a pinball machine obscures vital spoken information, whereas by 1972, the disturbance is caused by a wild progressive rock track on a jukebox, accompanied of course by gyrating and skimpily clad hippie chick. Further crossover elements include the lead character's recognition of a particular aroma, its fancy perfume in 1956, but what is described as a fetid odour by 1972, which seems to be a sign of less sophisticated times. Both Johnson and Stefan dwell in sizeable, roomy apartments with a large living space, and are visited by acquaintances with a frequency that only ever occurs in the movies. The use of a clunky reel-to-reel -reel tape machine is common to both films, as is a frosty relationship with the area's police inspector, the placing of classified advertisements in the newspaper, and most notably the wholesale lifting of Hathaway's classic climactic set-piece, the undisputed highlight of 23 Paces, where Van Johnson is led to the upper floor of a derelict and condemned war-damaged building by a seemingly kindly and helpful third party who promptly closes a door behind him and abruptly flees the scene, leaving our hero staggering and blindly feeling his way precariously towards a sheer 20-foot drop. In turn, Pastore has Stefan lured to a disused and deserted industrial plant where he is similarly suddenly left to his own devices and is unaware that he is stumbling towards a massive jagged hole in the upper flooring and facing an equally lethal topple. Pastore and his co-writers do work that aforementioned aromatic concept into their plot with enormous skill. Having substituted B.O. for Chanel No. 5, they reveal that they have done so in order for their killer to throw any pursuers or amateur detectives off the scent or in fact onto it, employing a drug-addled stooge as a decoy in a similar manner to the way that Harry H. Corbett hires an actor to pretend to be him in the 1959 film Cover Girl Killer, leading the police astray while he gets on with the business of committing his next dastardly deed. And while we're addressing the influences upon Pastore's film, well, I hesitate to claim the late in the game graphic shower murder as outdoing the all time number one from Psycho, but you certainly won't ever forget it. Even a rather ropey makeup job, given a little too much close scrutiny here, only serves to enhance the effect of the savagery curiously. Crimes of the Black Cat is receiving a long overdue Blu-ray release on the Cauldron label very soon. If you're planning on purchasing, I highly recommend watching Henry Hathaway's 23 Paces to Baker Street before you insert your Pastore disc. 
preceding knowledge of the former will enhance your appreciation no end. For my own concluding judgment on the great massively underrated giallo Crimes of the Black Cat, I'll simply note the film's setting is the Danish capital Copenhagen. And I'll finish with the words, wonderful, wonderful.